Okay, this is this is one of a series of small presentations we put together to basically demonstrate the value of battery monitoring. And today's one is called "A Day in the Life of a New York Battery." The battery was originally installed in New York sometime in 2001. It was a UPS application. There were two strings of 40 12 volt units. The building had no generators, so it was actually, when you calculated the runtime out, it should have done 90 plus minutes of runtime. The battery monitor was actually installed in early 2002, and it was monitored by the vendor, BTEC in this case. A number of the battery units have already been replaced in 2003 because they were having problems. It, it took almost six months to get this monitor up and running to the point at which we were happy we understood what the state of the battery was. Our story actually starts in July of 2003. This is the readings of the battery on July of 2003, based on the initial impedance values with a critical alarm limit of 30%. So in other words, this, is, this, is, this was set up for what, um, at that point, C and D had already put in the document and said 30% rise in, in OB value is effectively a 20% loss of uh, capacity. However, the actual service company was not using initial values. They were simply using the average at each reading as a way of measuring the... Uh, and I say the average at each reading in this case because a lot of times they don't even use the original average, which would make some sense, but they don't use the, initial, the original average. So, um, as you can see, with this one, there's now only three in the alarm condition but they did agree to change them so they changed them out and on the next reading we now have two but didn't we just change the three out that we see we just discovered the first problem with trying to use an average value as the basis if you've got high impedances on a number of units, it will bring the average up. So what happens then is when you replace the high impedance units, you actually bring more units into play and establish the fact that they are now above the alarm level. On the 11th of August, we basically had five units in alarm and three of them in, in maintenance limits based on the 30% rise. Then we had a power failure. I think most of you are old enough to remember it. Major power outage hits New York City or hit the whole of the East Coast in fact. So what happened to our UPS? Well, let's have a look at it. Twenty-two forty-nine, the power field. And you can see the slow but sure the voltage drop, the current was dropping off. There was a step there for some reason the current rose. And at twenty-three twenty-five, the UPS disconnected. Hold on, I thought I said it was ninety minutes. This thing only actually ran for 35 minutes. Now, it was cut off. It was slightly above the cutoff point at which it stopped. But it was nowhere near was this going to run for 90 minutes. Not only that, there were now 15 units that were below the alarm limits. But we only identified eight. Hmm. 
what happened? Well, the first teeth in the graph are these, these units that we identified as being above limits. So that's the eight units that were on the original graph. The blue is the actual runtime, and this line here is an indication of what the impedance value was above the above the limits. So as you see, there is a certain element of correlation between those ones we identified and the actual runtime. It's not perfect, but there is a correlation, i.e., the higher the impedance, the lower the runtime. But what happened to the other ones that we see? Hmm. Again, we have the line, the, the actual impedance line dropping off here, but the runtime does not correlate at all. So we have a problem. And the question is, what is the problem? Okay, so let's have a look at the ones that didn't correlate to impedance. String 1, unit 30. What you'll see is you have a unit, it drops off, stabilizes slightly, drops off again, and comes down. Very clearly what will happen is we're actually losing units within that block. Because these are 12 volt blocks. So if you actually lose an individual cell, it will drop off the, the, the power, power available and therefore the voltage. What's more interesting is that if we actually look at the behaviour of this unit after the discharge, you'll notice that it was actually trending upwards. It just hadn't reached the alarm point yet. It was trending upwards. There's the black oil. It went into, into maintenance and then rose to critical. Now, that last point here, in fact, is when the whole battery was changed out in December. They changed the whole battery out in December, so you'll see this throughout. But that was what happened. So that one failed almost immediately. The next unit, similar behaviour, a little bit more dramatic, really dropped down and again and again and again. It just failed. In this case, when we look at the actual impedance data following it, it went into the critical mode almost immediately. So it was clearly that during the discharge, whatever was wrong with that battery actually got you know, made a lot worse by the actual discharge. So that's very clear there. This one's very interesting because what you'll see is here is that it turned out followed very well and then dropped off and then sort of started to drop again. We don't know because we didn't actually get a chance to take any of these batteries apart and analyse them, which is a, a, a key element to really finding out what's happening. But the whole point of this is my guess is that having watched it is that this was a battery that was actually starting to dry out because this is a typical discharge characteristic of a battery that has started to dry out. What you're getting is it will discharge correctly all the way down and then at one point it effectively runs out of active material. There simply is no more active electrolyte to change and do it, so it dries out. So that's almost convinced. And that is sort of borne out by, if I look at what happened afterwards, it slowly started to rise and actually only went into alarm on the very last moment. That would, would again tie up. What would happen was that because of the discharge, it would have dried out even more and then it would continue to dry out. It may well be that the whole act of doing the discharge or the recharge part, because if, if, if we had a valve that was sticking, just the act of recharging could have caused that valve to open a little bit more and continue to cause the battery to dry out. Hmm. 
This is a really interesting one because you can see it clearly dropped off. Then it stabilized and then it continued to decline. So, in fact, it continued to give power just at a lower level. It looks as if that one of the cells may well have gone reverse. Simply lack of capacity. But what's more interesting is that when you actually look at it, if you'll notice, the impedance actually started to drop off after the blackout. So it may well be that that cell in there has a partial short in it, and that's what's causing the impedance. It's probably shorting even more, you know, as the impedance is dropping down. But that would explain why you're not getting a rise in impedance, and it fell off at the, the, at the point. So that's the whole point about this is we wanted to look at these ones that actually didn't fit or didn't show up on the impedance. And there is a reason for all of them. So the question is why do these units then that failed did not show a rise in impedance? Well, let's look at this. What you can have is you have a battery here, okay? The moment it, one cell fails, simple as that. That's what's happening. Just because only one cell failed within a six volt module, you actually have lost that, that unit for capacity within the discharge. One of the other things about it is you can actually, the next example is going to show you what happens. This is, this is what I'm going to show you here, is actually four two volt blocks that happen to be side by side in a large battery. They are BRLA but they're two volt units. Okay, this is over a 20, 29 month period. If you actually add the four together, you end up with a combined rise in impedance over the 29 months of 23%. So that's nowhere near any of the limits that MDD, even at a 30% limit, you would still say that, that those four blocks were all working correctly. Unit 75 actually only rose by 5%. Unit 74 by 11%, Unit 73 by 34%, and Unit 72 was actually up at 54%. So it's easy to see and understand based on this how you can have one cell within a 12 volt unit that will, is well past its limits is already actually indicating failure if you can measure it and it's likely to fail. The problem that we have is that even with some of the customers that have multi-cell blocks, flooded multi-cell blocks, they insist on measuring them at the jar level, not at the individual cell level. This is the mistake they're making because they're not identifying the potential failures within each of the cells. You have to, if you're going to design if you're going to sell a battery monitoring system, you have to look at it from that point of view. So, for further information on this and anything else, please contact sales at btech.com. Thank you.